Hello, everybody, and welcome to World War II, Part Two: The Major Events and Turning Points. Uh, so, last time we got up to the major turning points of Stalingrad and Midway, and today we'll look at D-Day, June 6, 1944. American Allied troops land in Normandy, France on D-Day to begin the liberation of Western Europe. They're coming from Great Britain, launching from there across the English Channel to northern France to liberate France from German occupation. They call it D-Day because the, the, uh, the invasion is highly secretive. They went to great lengths to hide the invasion from the Germans, and so D just means uh, an algebraic way of saying we don't know which day it's going to be, or you don't know which day it's going to be, but on D-Day, each hour and minute, uh, we're going to do X or Y. Uh, here's a uh, famous photo of that uh, invasion. You can see that you're coming off of your boat up against heavily uh, fortified German defenses, machine guns, cannons, uh, mortars, uh, fighter planes, all of this, and you have no cover as you're coming up a beach. But what D-Day does have is the advantage of surprise and uh, a lot of preparation work done. Uh, the, the Supreme Allied Commander, uh, Dwight Eisenhower, General Eisenhower, right there, he's going to eventually become President Eisenhower, but here he has control over all the Allied forces, everybody who's uh, on the Allied side. And D-Day is going to be successful largely because of the supplies that we produce for the American soldiers. Every American soldier has about four tons of supplies compared to two pounds for the Japanese or some German soldiers. And so we are fully prepared for this. It's the details that go into it that, that make this invasion possible. Uh, it's, a, it's a surprise invasion. The Germans don't see it coming. And even with that surprise, and even with the preparation, um, 126,000 American soldiers will be dead or missing as a result of this invasion across four separate beaches, uh, Utah, Juneau, Gold, and uh, most infamously uh, Omaha, where several things went wrong. So that's the invasion that, that was noted for being one of the bloodiest ones because of how little protection those Omaha Beach soldiers had um, for a number of other reasons you can ask questions about in class. Uh, so. That's D-Day. Once that's over, then Allies, the Allied powers begin to take back parts of France. But that first beachfront invasion, uh, that is the hardest part. From there, we begin to go through Germany, and that's when we discover the, uh, the Holocaust. The liberation of Allied forces going from June 6th to April, liberation by Allied forces of Jews and others who had survived in concentration camps. Um, as we make our way towards Germany and towards Berlin, uh, we, we find the evidence of things that, uh, that Hitler's been trying to cover up. In fact, a lot of the, the, the camps, especially the death camps, they're not actually in Germany. They're in uh, uh, they're the, the crime scenes, so to speak, are, are not in Germany. They're elsewhere. So... This is when we start to uncover the camps and see the, uh, the awful things that have been happening. And this is a crime scene that's happening here. The, the, the crime is called genocide, the attempt to wipe out an entire genetic line of people to kill them. Uh, the Jews here or uh, other groups, the Romanians, uh, homosexuals, anybody who is uh, speaking against the Germans or the, the Nazi party. So we start to document the crimes. Dwight Eisenhower orders his men to, to document every single thing they see uh, because he knows that the danger will be that people will someday deny this happened. And, and this happens today. There are people who deny this happened and, uh, and, and don't believe it was a crime. They just think it was um, part of warfare happening. But no, this was a deliberate attempt to, to wipe out uh, large, entire groups of people. So this is where we're going to begin to see that and document that, and eventually we'll put the Nazis' uh, leaders on trial for these crimes, and, and some of them will be executed for this. And towards the end, the Germans actually tried to, to step up the efforts, because here you have these the, the prisoners, they're witnesses to the crime. They, they're witnesses, they saw things, and the Germans, and as the Allies were moving them, tried to kill as many witnesses as they can, knowing that they're, uh, 
they will be the witnesses to try to put them in jail or to have them uh, executed. We'll discuss more about this in the, uh, the next lesson. But for now, uh, as we close in on Berlin, and the Soviet Union is also closing in from the eastern side, uh, we come to VE Day. And I'm sorry for the cropping here. Uh, but May 8th, 1945, that's called VE Day, or Victory in Europe Day. Soviet forces occupy most of Eastern and Central Europe and the eastern portion of Germany. American and British forces occupy West Germany. This is a key thing for you to remember because this is going to set up the Cold War that lasts uh, for us the rest of the school year almost. So the Soviets come in on the east, the Allied uh, powers of the British, French, and American come in from the west, and that's, uh, that marks VE, or Victory in Europe Day, when finally uh, the Germans surrender. Now before the Germans surrender, uh, Hitler is going to kill himself and his uh, his his bride. Their honeymoon will be spent in a ditch covered in uh, petroleum and lit on fire. How romantic! And that brings us to the war in the Pacific. Back to the war in the Pacific. Uh, that war goes on uh, for several months, and it won't be until August sixth and ninth. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt has died. Harry Truman, his vice president, has become president, and he uh, has discovered the Manhattan Project, directed by Robert Oppenheimer. And then Harry Truman makes what I think is, is one of the most difficult decisions that I could imagine. He makes a choice that to save American soldiers' lives from an invasion of Japan, he's going to drop or order the dropping of this, uh, well, this is the, the Trinity bomb. But there are three bombs made. This one right here is going to be uh, tested. And then the two remaining ones, two different uh, kinds, but the same concept of uh, splitting an atom to create a reaction. He's going to order the dropping of uh, the first bomb on Hiroshima in Japan. And about 200,000 people will die from both Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And it's not until the second bomb on Nagasaki that the Japanese agree to surrender. And that marks what we'd call uh, VJ, or Victory in Japan Day. And that would be the, the complete end of World War II. It's a tremendous moment. Uh, the relief that we wouldn't have to invade Japan was great. My grandfather uh, was in the Atlantic fighting Germany, and then when, when uh, Germany surrendered, he was then shipped out to the Pacific to fight Japan. So now I'd like you to see just the scope of what we're talking about. Military deaths in dark green and uh, in light uh, beige civilian deaths. So the uh, USA and the United Kingdom have the fewest casualties, as does Italy. And then Japan at uh, 2.4 million, Poland at 240,000, Germany at 5.5 million military deaths, China at 3. And the Soviet Union, 10 million military deaths all told to this war. America has very few civilian deaths, uh, same for the United Kingdom, um, same thing for Italy. Japan, uh, a few more, largely because of the uh, atomic bombs. But Poland, Poland is, uh, is getting into the millions of civilian casualties. That's the Holocaust. And Germany, 2 million, that's because of our bombings of it. But then China, just look at that right there, 11 million. And then... Uh, uh, I think it's 15 million for the Soviet Union. So try and appreciate that for World War II, it's a big event for America, but for China and the Soviet Union, it is a very, very traumatic event that affects the next few chapters. And even China today is, uh, is, is largely traumatized by what the Japanese did to China. That's it right there. 11 million Chinese civilians killed in World War II. We don't often talk about that. Um, that that uh, 5 million from Poland is... is is, is the Holocaust that we're familiar with. Military deaths, there you see the Soviet Union and China experienced the most military death in this war. Uh, the Soviet Union, um, that's, that's most of what the Atlantic War with Germany is, is the fight with Soviet Union. And that, uh, yeah, so the Chinese and Soviet Union, their experience of World War II is, is very different from our own. And then for the Axis powers, there we see that Germany and Japan uh, most of the military deaths were by Germany and then by Japan. Um, so that's the end of uh, this lesson. 
and we'll come back next time to discuss the Holocaust. For right now, write down your questions, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.